It's very important for us as filmmakers to want the audience, to guide the audience in wanting t for Banner not to hawk out, not wanting Banner to hawk out, and sometimes wanting Banner, wanting Banner to hawk out. So Brazil is like this. At first you're like, no, don't, 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 don't. You're surrounded by people. No, don't, 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 don't. And then uh, in this factory, when he's alone, surrounded by you know, bad guys, you're like, come on, do it, do it, turn into the hawk. And eventually he does. Ah, here we go. <laughs> One of the things we felt like we wanted to do was not blow out the Hulk, not blow out that part of the story too much too early. So Louis used to talk about the bottling factory as he called it like the ghost in the darkness. You know, it was um, the monster in the dark. You don't want to give everything to the audience at first. You want to hold back as much as you can and get them to, you know, well, did I see it, did I see it? And you catch glimpses of them, and the soldiers don't really know what's going on, the bullies sure as heck don't know what's going on, and the audience begins to see and will see the Hulk in and around the shadows, and you are not quite sure, is that a pipe, is that a, a bottle, what is that, Oof, and an arm comes out, and it's the Hulk. this sequence and really you bring them into seeing into the Hulk, the world of the Hulk for the first time in the power of the Hulk. Three is our first Hulk sequence, which is very, very, very important. And action, go! And fly! So you're gonna see the guy with the yellow shirt and the guy with the, the royal blue shirt turn around fast. That's, that's when the guy goes and that's when I'm gonna kill you right after that. Team two is going this way, okay. team three is going forward. It's a lot of geography, because Louis and Edward specifically wanted the real geography working so that when these guys came around, it actually would happen. If they came around here, Hulk was here, and it wasn't just peace, peace, peace. It actually all made sense. <laughs> um, set up for when the Hulk chokes me out and throws me against that uh, panel over there. Yeah. So them doing the throw part. The throw part. Of it. You got wearing your. Got a nice little harness on. A little vest on. Getting ready. Uh, you get hooked okay, guys, up and it's good. It's We're fun. setting up for the real stuntman crashing in. It'll be about 20 minutes. You need a breather. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. That's you, right? That's me. Yeah. See you later. Gotta go to work. We had to whip him into the wall a bunch of times. Action! Good. See, normally awesome. I don't let older guys like this do this kind of thing. It's <laughs> great though. You think he's got another one in him? Parker! Action! It's good because then you really see it's him, you know. It comes, and it comes down, bam. It was really cool. It was like a lot nice and faster. It was good. It was good. The extra 15 PSI helps. Where are we now in the sequence? You're on the top of. Yeah, yeah, this is the beginning. This, you just went upstairs and you just. Uh, yeah, that's. You just reloaded. We also had some interesting shots where the Hulk's running east, underneath a bunch of grating, where all the grating's popping which was a lot of fun. Oh, geez, the thing that was flying along with the, with, when the Hulk's underneath and the plates are going up. Yeah, that was something. And we were, we'd shot the hell out of that day, too. We were doing, I mean, we really worked. We did a lot of setups. That was something. The idea of this shot is that there's the, the Hulk running through this factory underneath this walkway, and he's a huge guy. So he's banging the walkway as he goes, and the grates are flying up. And Tim Roth is down at the other end, but he's firing like crazy. So we come flying down the walkway. The grates are popping. We're staying as close as we can to the, the, the grates. It's very dramatic that way. And then we rise up at the end to uh, close up on Tim as he's firing at the, uh, at the enemy. That was actually a bit scary, because I had to back, walk backwards and be firing at the same time. And, uh, and still be aware that that thing could flip me, and uh, it, was, it was kind of scary. All these guys know what they're doing, all these 
they, you know, guys who do these big movies, most, most of the stuff I'm on is like two cameras in a corner, you know. You're lucky, you're lucky if you've got a tripod. Fun, but I um, mean, you know, the, the boys do the big jumps, you know. But the more you can do, and the more that they can f make you feel safe doing stuff, the, the more shots Louis can get. You know, that, that's the whole, that's the gag. <laughs> Tell them, you know, I'd, I'd give them my age and say, you know, there's a limit. So day off tomorrow, hey, right? It was fun. I mean, I've never done, I mean, I've done a bit of stunt work, but um, never done that action movie thing before. It's hilarious. See you later. Go get the harness off. Well, that was a great piece. It's got so good energy. Once again, as soon as this uh, piece an is awesome out, stunt, we roll a clean and, plate, uh, we go home. It'll be a great mixture of uh, CG and um, practical plate, practical stuntmen. The tanks that uh, the Hulk smashes through, of course, they weigh about 5,000 pounds apiece. So accelerating those in a Hulk-like manner was, was, uh, was an interesting journey. I mean, some of our testing, we actually had uh, tanks sort of, shall we say, l get away on us a little bit and maybe go through a wall or two. And we really uh, went down a bit of a path to learn how to control the forces we were unleashing. Did you see the big fire truck out there with the... Uh... The rig on it, that's, that's the big one. That's going to be pulling all kinds of stuff. We call that the abomination. It throws cars through the air. It pulls big 5,000-pound tanks. It'll, it's got a lot of force behind it. It's, it's pretty impressive. The director wanted to see something like, like that, and that's yeah. what we can do to a car. So it's a pretty neat rig. Uh, I, hope that, uh, I hope the viewer in the film appreciates that uh, those things really are 5,000 pounds. What happens is this giant tank has these UHMW pucks that are in between these rails. Keep Tom square. This tank here is cabled to the abomination outside. And what will happen is when this tank comes down to here, Gary, you can see on that camera that's set up there, he hits the button. That fires this tank pulled out of the shot. And we hit this electrical panel here, where there are all kinds of arcing match sparks loaded into the back of here, which will create a sparking event. Oh, How was it, Mark? Got it! What, how did he do? It's five, six? Oh, I think we need to go again. They, they put a giant 11,000-pound bottling machine in the shot that he's supposed to pick up and push through the wall. Well, moving that machine was not really viable, so what we did is we made a replica of the machine in steel, painted green. This is going to go right through that wall right there. Hopefully it's uh, perfect on the first take. This is his escape. I mean, he's had enough. He's had everybody all over him, the commandos, everything. He just, he just wants to get away from it. He wants to escape. He grabs the machine, he sees it, he throws it through the wall, and he makes his break. We scan the machine in great detail. We bring that into our computers, and we make a real high-res model out of that. Um, and we're going to put it into the shot. How was it? It was good. It was great. It worked out beautifully. Exactly what we wanted.